Hey, glad you're still with us here on the Sports Spectacular. Larry Smith, Mike Hagley, Brad Sturdy, and uh, we are joined by uh, the guy each week, the Illini guy, Marcus Damascon, presented by HX Home Solutions. Each and every week, we appreciate their support, not only of the show, but also uh, of Illini student-athletes. Marcus, let's talk about, um, first off, we were, we were joking last week because you finally had like a day off and took a nap. What's it feel like to have five days off in February? I mean, you're probably almost bored at this point, right? <laughs> yeah i mean we we still been practicing but uh today today we got an off day so it was good it was enjoyable i got my workout in got a nap in of course on the off day and i mean yeah i just kind of get caught up on all the other stuff in life just wait till you're old those naps are necessary they're, they're <laughs> not, you, have, you need them every day not just on your off days no, like, uh, that's all right. They're not already all... necessary for me. Well, yeah, yeah but they're not. They're not gold. When you're our age, they're not gold. They're they platinum. Are. Yeah, they are. They are. It's it's definitely a necessity. Uh, you know. So, Marcus, real, real want to go back. You know, to last. You know, last game. You guys um, obviously didn't have the finish you wanted against Nebraska, um, but you come out with the win. Um, you, you mentioned that you're maybe a little tired of having all the close games. Yeah, I mean, it would it would be nice to just go in and beat a team by 30 and sit on the end of the bench for the last four minutes and enjoy the <laughs> win. But it's the Big Ten, and that's that's rare. So we you just got to win the close games when they come. Just follow up real quick. That Nebraska game, last four minutes, you guys just kind of went into kind of a, I don't know, just couldn't get anything to fall. Just kind of, and it, Nebraska goes on an 11-0 run in three minutes there, and what was kind of the you – know, what happened there? Yeah, uh, I mean, looking back on it, we got a lot of good looks. Uh, you know, I missed the one at the rim. I think Tanner's missed a couple of threes. Like, we had good looks. We got some old boards. We did everything right offensively. We just didn't didn't finish. So, I mean, that would have changed the game. We just hit one or two shots. And then uh, defensively, I mean, we had a couple of mistakes, and they hit some shots. I mean – Tamanaga hit some tough shots. Brink is good. It's just good players. And when you play good players, if you don't hit shots, they're going to make you pay. And that's just kind of what happened. Yeah. And, and at home, you guys haven't been quite as, uh, as reliable shoot, shooters as sometimes you are on the road. Um, is that, is that something where, you know, the, the, just the excitement and the electricity of the fans, or is it just like a statistical improbability that uh, that happens? Yeah, I don't know. I I guess sometimes it just happens. Usually, usually teams shoot better at home. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going on with us. Hopefully, it'll it'll switch soon. All right, got to ask you though. We've been talking amongst ourselves. I'm just gonna throw it out there. You haven't seen the wrath of Brad Underwood during games. Who he got real hot in the collar early and often all of last season. He was fired up uh, early in this game. What was your reaction when you saw him uh, get that technical and and start yelling at the refs? To be honest, I was I was on the other side of the court, and I thought I had thought one of our guys got teed up. I didn't even know coach got teed up until like the technical was given out, and I went up to the ref and asked what happened because I was I, I had no clue honestly. I was about as lost as some of the fans in the top row. So I mean, I, I didn't even get to I didn't even get to see the whole thing. I, I wish I would have. <laughs> wanted to enjoy that. Did you talk yeah. to coach about did you talk to coach about discipline under fire? <laughs> That's always uh, a nice we, thing to throw in there, but do it at the moment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wouldn't go there. Just uh, I've probably <laughs> known Coach Underwood longer than you. I, I probably wouldn't go there. I probably wouldn't do that. So <laughs> is there a so you know, go now you guys head to uh the Breslin Center, Michigan State. You know, the Spartans are always tough there, and they're just a, you know, they're a physical, they're a grinded out kind of team. And you know, they're going to, you know, I, coming off the the loss, you know, coaches is probably going to have the football pads out this week. And uh, do you go into this game and you just think, you know, you just, is there a different mindset knowing you have to be, you know, it's going to be physical? Um, I wouldn't say it's a different mindset. Uh, I guess. As you come down, every game means a little bit more as you come down throughout the season. So, you know, we're going in with the mindset that this is a must win. Uh, as far as the physicality, yeah, it's going to be physical, but I feel like that's just Big Ten basketball. Like, we're used to these physical games. We're used to leaving with bruises and 
So I don't think that's anything new or anything that we haven't been prepared for already. So if if you're in a situation, let's say, and one of your teammates is getting frustrated at the calls, what what do you do to try to defuse that situation and and you know help help the situation out or be more positive? Uh, for me, I think I just try to get people focused on the next play. Uh, it's really easy in basketball to think about the last player, like the last missed shot or the last missed call or whatever happened. But, you know, thinking about what's happened, like the refs aren't going to change their call after they made a call. So, like, I think it's just almost pointless to, you know, complain about a call that happened 30 seconds ago because nothing's going to happen. So I think just trying to get everybody on the same page that so we know what we're doing on our next offensive trip, next defensive trip, so we have no mistakes in the future. Yeah. That's a good approach. Um, you're entering a stretch right now. Uh, you guys going in, tied for second place. You're right where you want to be. You're two games ahead of the rest of the pack in the Big Ten. You want to stay that way, right? Um, but you're coming into a stretch right now where three or your next four games are actually on the road. You've got, uh, as we mentioned, at Michigan State, home against uh, Michigan, a last place team, but a team that played you guys very tough up at their place. And then you go out to a couple of places um, that Illinois has has had some trouble winning it, at Maryland, at Penn State. I know you don't want to look ahead too much, but it, but in terms of what have you learned from road trips uh, you've already taken this season that you can apply uh, with these these games coming up? Yeah, road trips, it's just you just got to focus on yourselves. You know, when you go into hostile environments, when there's a bunch of fans in the student section saying a lot of stuff to us, you know, I think I think road trips in a way kind of make your team closer. You know, you go on the road, you spend time with each other in the hotel, you eat with each other. And then it's everybody versus you guys. So I, I really like road games, and I think road games are great for us. You know, it's just all about staying connected and just kind of having each other's back. Is you so as you 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 know you head into the Michigan State? Have you ever been to? This is probably going to be one of those arenas like Tennessee, where you probably have. This is probably one of the going to be one of the wildest scenes that you've uh, you you come into. Do you? Does this kind of is that kind of? I know some people like actually get excited because they know they know what's coming. Yeah, I mean, I I love road games. I I love when, you know, like at Purdue when the the crowds sold out and they're loud. Like, those are just fun environments, and it. I mean, I I love those games. Well, two words of advice to you at Michigan State: avoid Sissoko. You probably have heard about what happened with him. Yeah, uh, I'll cross that one. We've already been informed. <laughs> yeah, we just want to make sure. And then at, at Maryland, avoid the chicken wings when they throw them at coach. Yeah, so, I heard about oh. that too. Yeah. Yeah, if coach yeah. gets mad, calm him down. It'll be great. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that one. <laughs> you have a much better chance of avoiding chicken wings and Sissoko than you do calming down coach when he gets mad. <laughs> That's right. You only go so, so far from him. He's going to be right there with you every step you go. Mark, it's always great to talk with you. Um, safe travels this weekend. Get that dub up in Michigan, and uh, we'll catch up with you next week. Yes, sir. Appreciate you guys. All Take right. Care. Thanks so much. We appreciate you. Marcus Damask here once again presented by HX Home Solutions, uh, the guard for the Finding Illini. By, by the way, once again, 10th in the country, second in the Big Ten, off to uh, their best start here in the past decade and trying to build on that against the Spartans up in East Lansing on Saturday. That's, uh, again, a noon tip on CBS. Lots more to come right here. We're going to talk more with Steve Berkowitz from USA Today. He's up next talking about this NLRB decision and how it could lead to guys like Marcus uh, sometime in the future actually being employees of the school. We'll break that down. That's next.